Aristo. We have declared the war in But we don't plan to surrender either. We are going to win. The portions and would lead to World War II. Allied air forces began an attack on military targets. that in the 21st century that America... March 5th, 2052, the United States has officially closed. The United States will go ahead with a national quarantine. The new plague virus disaster simply stands. changes. It was the inevitable result of the path humanity had chosen. Everyone who entered into the conflict expected victory. Everyone was optimistic. But as the hostilities escalated, optimism faded, and society began to collapse. The great vaults were built to house the wealthy, the powerful, the influential, and those deemed necessary to their survival. Inside, resources and technology were stockpiled, a final defense against the coming Holocaust. With the past behind them and the present destroyed, they looked to the future. The sturdy Vault Zero was to be the nucleus of the Vault Network, housing the greatest leaders, artists, and scientists. The inhabitants of Vault Zero were to reunite the vaults and lead the people to a new life, a new world. But after the bombs, the world would be a harsh one. To ensure the creation of a post-nuclear utopia, the vault dwellers would need help. Machinery was constructed to tame a land hardened by the ravages of war, then tempered by nuclear winter. 
but plans were barely in place when the first missiles left the silos. During the destruction, communication between the vaults ceased. Entire vaults were lost. Those that survived were on their own. Not all vaults succumbed to the machinations of war. On North America's west coast, one group of military vault dwellers emerged almost unscathed. They surveyed the wasteland and squared their shoulders for the task ahead. These dedicated survivors salvaged the technology from the vaults, technology that was studied, replicated, and fiercely guarded. For they knew that while their power came from numbers, their future lay in scientific knowledge. In time, they formed the Brotherhood of Steel. The Brotherhood used their knowledge to drive back the atrocities of the wasteland, proclaiming themselves the technological saviors of mankind. They scoured the land in search of more technology, raiding mutant camps, bandit towns, and the broken remains of other vaults. But even they could not keep pace with the high tolls demanded by life in the wasteland. The Brotherhood found themselves at odds with their need for new blood versus their code of technological secrecy. The debate was lengthy. Finally, the elders ruled against sharing the technology with outsiders, convinced that they would endure as they had before. Further discussion was discouraged and the elders ordered the minority on a mission across the wastes. Super mutants, the foot soldiers of a conquered army, had been forced into a retreat across the mountainous barrier to the east. The Brotherhood constructed airships and dispatched the minority to track down and assess the extent of the remaining super mutant threat. But disaster struck while crossing the great mountains. A great storm gripped the main airship and flung it far from its course. The mighty ship was badly damaged. The smaller sections were torn from the main craft, never to be seen again. Many of the expedition's leaders were lost to the winds. The fraction of the crew that still survived struggled to keep their ship aloft before finally crashing on the outskirts of a once thriving metropolis, a city once called Chicago. Broken, scattered, and scarred, they took stock of the situation and once again squared their shoulders to the task ahead. The Brotherhood had much to offer the surrounding villages. They traded advanced medicines in exchange for food and labor. They traded protection from bandits in exchange for new recruits. In time, their ranks began to swell. Separated by distance and ideology from the main Brotherhood forces, the minority was free to forge a new Brotherhood of Steel, one that reflected the ideals they had strived for all along. However, one's future in the wasteland is never certain, for an old power has awakened, also bent on making this land its own. Life in the Brotherhood is about to change. Paranoid times leading up to the war, new vaults were being constructed every day. The ancient temples of war known as Norad became the home for Vault Zero, a storage place for the cryogenically frozen geniuses of the time. The calculator was built to be a mixture of machine and man, a gestalt of mechanical switches and human brains linked through a cybernetic interface. Supposedly, representing the ideal society, these brains were to govern the higher functions of the calculator, powering its neural network. The calculator was designed to oversee the repopulation of the continent in the event of a war and educate the new humanity in the ways of the old world. But first, it was to sterilize the land, making a fresh start for the soon-to-be-emerging citizens of Neo-America. For this task, the calculator had at its disposal an army of emergency pacification robots that were designed to survive the Holocaust and surface from the ashes immediately after to begin their task. But a mechanical malfunction left the calculator damaged during the years since the bombs dropped. Mankind had to find its own ways in the darkness of the post-apocalypse. Only now is the calculator activating its robots and embarking on its mission of mass genocide. Because of hardwired programming, it is unable to adapt to the world that has arisen while it slumbered. 
The calculator will not listen to pleas or threats. It cannot be bargained with. It must be stopped. Ranks have grown, and with their swollen numbers, they find themselves coming closer to the ultimate goal. The time to expand is now. Leaving an outpost behind, the warriors begin moving westward into a region known as the Belt. It is a scarred and desolate land, filled with death and the relics of a time before. Those who dwell here have scraped together a bleak existence, built on blood and grim determination. These isolated people are as hard as any in the wasteland. Pressuring these people to join the ranks of the Brotherhood will not be easy. Many will not understand the Brotherhood's glorious vision to reunite the people. Some resistance is expected. While the inhabitants are dangerous, the land itself has the power to stir up fearful memories in some of the generals and elders. They tell of the ill-fated flight across the mountains and how their mighty airships were torn apart. Old lore and surviving data suggests that at least one of the Great Brotherhood Zeppelins was lost in this very region. If it were located, there is a chance the equipment and supplies it contained could be salvaged and returned to the noble purpose for which they were intended. There may even be survivors, but few hold any real hope of this. Only time will tell. Initiation now over, the Brotherhood reveals to you their highest objective. Fragments of data left over from before the Great War showed that the ancients spent many years constructing vaults to house the survivors. Recently acquired data, however, points to the creation of an enormous super vault. This nucleus of the vault network was built to protect the greatest minds of the time and would be the spearhead of post-war civilization. If the Brotherhood could find this vault and activate its systems, they would have access to technology resources previously undreamed of, as well as access to the ancients themselves. But the journey to the calculated location of Vault Zero would be perilous. A large army and a vast area of operations would be required for a mission of this magnitude. They plan to follow the Roaring River to the south, forging alliances, gaining fresh recruits, and, if necessary, eliminating aggressors. Bunkers will be established in each new region to firmly establish a secure area of operations. When the Brotherhood's rule in the region is undisputed and their ranks are brimming with new recruits, the real campaign will begin, heading back towards the mountains. The Brotherhood's fears are confirmed. The robots now have multiple production factories around the wasteland. They are concentrated heavily around the Great Mountains in a region known as Colorado Springs. This is the fabled location of Vault Zero, which houses the mastermind behind the robot menace, the Calculator. Data from the Brotherhood Research Center dates the origin of the robots before the war that decimated the land. Their purpose, to help humanity crawl back from the brink of self-destruction but the robots now seek to destroy the very humans they were created to save. They boast great strength and power, and one factor seems certain. All life forms have become their prey. The Brotherhood has adapted to new enemies before, however, and with the development of new weapons, they will adapt again. Brotherhood tacticians and generals will not be idle, for new enemies require new tactics. Assault squads must be directed at the robot production and command centers that supply the calculator's metallic ranks. The Brotherhood's predicted losses are staggering, but what is life as a warrior without peril? Mutants were a powerful adversary with great strength and courage. Without the leadership of Gamoran, though, they will never pose the same threat to the Brotherhood. It was the corruption of Gamoran that provided the most sobering lesson. Even the purest of hearts can falter. The elders and generals must push their sorrow aside, however, for they have more pressing matters to attend to. The data recovered from Gamoran's base indicates that the mutant force's route intersected with the calculated location of Vault Zero. It is possible that the mutant horde discovered the location of Vault Zero during their exodus from the west. 
Is there a connection between the mutants discovering Vault Zero and the emergence of the mechanical menace? Only time will tell. The future holds one thing for certain. More encounters with the robots are inevitable, and the Brotherhood has a new and deadly enemy. <laughs>